Hello and welcome to the second community consultation and information activity for the class environmental study, also called an EA, on the Water Street Sanitary Sewage Pumping Station Capacity Expansion. I would like to start off by saying thank you for joining this virtual presentation. My name is Deborah Ross from Jacobs, presenting on behalf of the project team. Durham Region retained Jacobs as the consultant to complete the class environmental assessment study for this project, also referred to as the Class EA study. I would like to present the Community Consultation Process Overview. The purposes of this presentation are to provide an overview of the project and why it is needed, present the evaluation of alternative solutions and rationale for the recommended solution, provide information on the recommended solution, and to request your feedback. We want to hear from you. To provide your feedback, please submit your comments to the contact information on the project webpage. The Water Street Sanitary Sewage Pumping Station Capacity Expansion Project is a Schedule B Municipal Class EA and is being completed to fulfill the requirements of Ontario's EA Act. The Municipal Class EA follows the Municipal Engineers Association's guidance document, which defines a process to plan municipal water and wastewater projects in Ontario. The Class EA process is being completed in two phases. In phase one, the problem is defined, which is essentially rationale for why a project is required. For this project, the Class EA was required because the existing wastewater pumping station that services most of Port Perry could not provide capacity for the future, and the Class EA is the process to identify the preferred solution to provide capacity. A notice of commencement of the EA process was sent out to inform the public of this project in May 2019. Phase two involved reviewing information on existing conditions, defining servicing needs, identifying alternative feasible solutions, and establishing a methodology to evaluate alternative solutions. For this project, this information was presented to obtain feedback at the first Public Information Center open house held in June 2019 at the Port Perry Library. Materials presented at that open house are provided on the project webpage. The alternative solutions were further developed by project team after that meeting. Input received from the community was used to help the team evaluate the alternatives and recommend a preferred solution. The project team has completed the evaluation and now is seeking your comments on the recommendation. This is the second point of contact with uh, the public to obtain your feedback and is being completed using a virtual approach due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. All input that we receive from this public consultation activity will be considered when finalizing the preferred solution and design concept. A project file will be prepared and issued in the fall of 2020, and a notice will be issued to the public to present timing for a minimum 30-day review period. During that period, the project file, including information on the entire study, will be made available through the project webpage and you will have an opportunity to reach out to the project team to, to discuss any outstanding concerns related to the recommended solution. Once the project file is finalized, the region will proceed with project implementation, including design and construction of the selected alternative. This slide presents the Water Street Sanitary Sewage Pumping Station drainage area and servicing requirements. The Water Street SSPS services most of the Port Perry Sanitary Service Area with approximate boundaries of Reed Street to the north, King Street to the south, Old Simcoe Road to the west, and Lake Skogog to the east, as shown in the map. The service area is more than 90% residential, with the remainder being commercial and industrial. Currently, the pumping station serves a population of 6,642 people with a sanitary service area of 237 hectares and projected peak design flow of 213 liters per second. The increase in the pumping station capacity will happen in two stages. In the first stage, capacity will be provided for a population of 10,500, and in the future, pumping capacity will be expanded for a build-out population of 13,000. This Phase one estimate is based on population growth estimated in the region's official plan and includes existing populations now serviced by private septic systems that could be connected to the sanitary sewer um, collection system. The full build-out capacity 
services uh, 523 hectares of sanitary service area and has a 350 liter per second peak design flow. Phase one is the problem statement. The Water Street Sanitary Sewage Pumping Station, as shown in the slide photo, was originally constructed in 1971 and has undergone several upgrades and modifications. As a result, the existing station requires major upgrades due to the age of the infrastructure. Additional pumping capacity is also required to service the Water Street Sanitary Sewage Pumping Station drainage area to allow for planned growth in the service area. The population serviced by the sewage pumping station is forecasted to grow to a full build-out population of 13,000. However, the building envelope of the existing pumping station does not allow the station to be expanded to provide the required capacity. The purposes of this Class EA is to recommend a preferred solution to provide the required sanitary sewage pumping capacity to service the Water Street Sanitary Sewage Pumping Station drainage area. The following alternatives to providing wastewater pumping uh, capacity in the service area were evaluated in the initial screening process. A, do nothing. B, limit development. C, implement water use efficiency and inflow and infiltration reduction measures. D, flow diversion to another drainage area. E, construct a new pumping station and force main and F, construct and or optimize the existing station. The ability of each alternative to provide for current and future capacity was assessed in order to determine whether the alternatives would be shortlisted for further evaluation. Constructing a new pumping station as well as upgrading and or optimizing the existing station were the only two alternatives considered to be feasible. Alternative sites were identified for the new pumping station. Five possible sites were identified for a new pumping station. The proposed locations are also identified on the map. Site 1, outlined in purple, is across the street from the existing downtown from, from the existing site of the Water Street sewage, Sanitary Sewage Pumping Station. The site is expected to take up approximately half of the central downtown parking lot. Site 2, outlined in dark blue, is northwest of the existing Water Street Sanitary Sewage Pumping Station. The proposed uh, site is south of the old rail lane and east of Williams Creek, located within the existing township parking lot. Site 3, outlined in green, is north of the Scugog Memorial Pumping Station Memorial Public Library and within Bird's Eye Park. The pumping station proposed location is west of the pool area within the park. Site 4, outlined in light blue, is to the west of Williams Creek in the area where the Durham Rowing Club and storage area is currently located. The fifth alternative, outlined in yellow, is at the existing Water Street Sanitary Sewage Pumping Station location. The modifications and upgrades of the station would require building a larger facility due to the increase in capacity required. Therefore, this alternative was based on building a new pumping station adjacent to the existing pumping station where space is available. The shortlisted alternatives were evaluated based on their ability to provide required capacity and their potential impacts, defined by criteria in four categories, natural environment, sociocultural, technical, and economic. The impacts of each alternative was considered for each criterion. Public and stakeholder input from the first public information center was considered in developing the evaluation criteria. The impact on public parking space was identified as an additional criterion based on this input. A rating approach was used to present the evaluation results. To evaluate the alternatives, each alternative was scored with respect to each criterion using a color and symbol based evaluation method. For example, a green circle full circle represents the most preferable, and an empty red sim uh, circle uh, represents the least preferred solution for each category. Here is the evaluation results summary. Out of the five alternatives that were chosen, only four were included in the evaluation. Site 5, adjacent to the existing pumping station, would be a complex construction project due to the need to bypass the station during construction. It would also have more social and cultural impacts than other alternatives, as it is designated as a Lake Scugog waterfront open space, 
connected to the Township of Scugog Waterfront Revitalization Project and adjacent to the George Curry Green Elevator, uh, or referred to as the Old Mill. Out of the four new pumping station sites uh, alternatives that were evaluated, Site 3 in Birdseye Park was the highest rated, uh, having the least impacts um, of the alternatives. The site was selected as the per alt preferred alternative for the following reasons. It scored moderately to highly preferred across all categories, shown in blue, uh, the blue three-quarter circle. It obtained the highest socio-cultural score because it is the only site that does not cause loss of parking. Uh, it is the public parking. It is the most compatible with the future planning policies initiatives underway for downtown Port Perry, and it is the best opportunity to design the building to be compatible with its surrounding. It also has slightly higher capital cost compared to Site 1. However, Site 1 impacts to parking and downtown business cannot be completely mitigated. Also, potential natural environments can uh, impacts can be mitigated for this site, such as replanting trees. This slide presents the preliminary concept for the new pumping station. Uh, the preferred alternative located in Birdseye Park will involve the construction of a new pumping station with a capacity of 275 litres per second during phase one and provision for future expansion with full build-out capacity of 350 litres per second. As shown in the slide graphics, the pumping station will be located to, adjacent to the swimming pool on the west side and across from the library to the north. Once the new pumping station has been constructed and commissioned, the existing Water Street Sanitary Sewage Pumping Station will be decommissioned and demolished. Here are preliminary concepts for the new pumping station. These graphics show uh, proposed architectural renderings of the east and west facing views of the new pumping station. These renderings are provided to represent a typical sanitary sewage station. It is important to note that the detailed design process has not started and the look of these facilities is subject to change, uh, future review and change. New piping infrastructure is required to convey wastewater to and from the pumping station. As a requirement of constructing a new pumping station, underground wastewater conveyance piping will also be required to convey wastewater to and from the pumping station. The existing sanitary force mains are located on Old Rail Lane and connect to the existing Water Street Sanitary Sewage Pumping Station as shown in the orange hatched lines. Twin 400 millimeter diameter force mains are proposed to connect the new pumping station to the existing force mains. An inlet sanitary sewer will be installed that connects the existing maintenance hole upstream of the current station on Water Street and the new pumping station wet well, as outlined in the red hatched line. The pumping station will also be installed with a standby generator and transformer located outside the building on the pumping station property. There will be a new access road within the site to provide operations and maintenance access along with a gate and fence around the property. Measures to mitigate impacts will be implemented. The construction and long-term use of a new sewage pumping station has the potential to impact traffic and land use, noise and vibration, erosion and sedimentation, tree and site restoration, and odors. The following steps will be implemented to mitigate these impacts. For traffic and land use, construction traffic on local residential roads will be restricted. In addition, local residences, businesses, and uh, the library will be advised of all closures to the roundabout and the parking lot. Access to all properties will be maintained and construction will be planned to minimize the size of the construction area. For noise and for vibration, towns, Township Anti-Noise Bylaw for all construction activities will be enforced and construction activities will be restricted to workday hours to prevent evening and weekend noise. For erosion and sedimentation control, sediment tax track will be used for storm runoff during construction. Silt fences will be installed along the perimeters of the construction site to uh, capture blowing sand and dust and excavated material will be covered to prevent erosion by rain or wind. Catch basins will also be covered by filter fabric to prevent sediments in, uh, into receiving watercourses. The natural environment will be maintained by avoiding the cutting of mature trees wherever possible and replacing or replanting trees if they do need to be removed. During long-term operation of the facility, operating equipment will be contained in the building to minimize external sound. 
Parking areas and private properties will be restored after construction along with sidewalks, roads, and parking uh, areas. Additionally, proactive control of odors from the station will be provided. Thank you for your interest in this project. On behalf of Jacobs and the project team, I would like to thank you all for your interest in this project and for attending the, this virtual community consultation information panel session. We welcome your feedback. In the next steps for this project, the project team will review all comments and consider these in finalizing the design concept. The project file to document the Class EA will be completed. The notice of completion will be sent to the project contact list and advertised to advise that the project file report is available on the project webpage for public review for a 30-day review period. During that period, the project team will re respond to any additional comments. Please provide your feedback to the following contacts, also uh, provided on the project webpage before August 21st. Thank you.